Hello everyone, my name is Firas and today I'm going to explain how we use real GBIM integration and digital twin approaches to monitor construction projects for many benefits. First of all, I introduce myself a bit. I'm a certified surveyor and the head of research and development in our company. Our company is Galilee Surveyors, a surveying and mapping company that has a lab for new technologies that we use to test and implement various of location problems. You see, a part of our goal is to help construction companies tackle the many location problems they face on a daily basis. Some of them are introduced today. And uh, me, myself, I'm a location consultant for many construction sites that run into major location problems. So this is our agenda. I'm going to speak a bit about the connection between the BIM and the GEO and what each stands for in, in the connection, in the integration. I'll uh, speak a bit about costs, problem, and how can GEO benefit every construction site. And uh, I'm going to use an example to show how some of the digital twin uh, approaches can really uh, also help in construction sites. So let's go. I mentioned earlier in uh, about the term of location problems, but the professional term should be geodetic problems. But using the word geo is not as clear to all brain professionals. So before I start talking about geo beam problems, and while many of you know what BIM stands for, what does geo stands for in construction? Well, geo stands for geography. It's called geo ground information, translated from Latin. But in our field, Geo can have a deeper meaning or a more detailed meaning in the vast science of the word geo. For example, geometry is the term of measurement in uh, geo, and geodesy is the measurement of the earth in manners of shape and size. And when you want to dig into the advanced and detailed term geomatics, it's the relevant term to the advanced and detailed use of location, uh, or let's call it geostudy. GIS is part of, uh, of it too, which stands for geoinfo. Now you see, geospatial is relating the data directly linked to specific geographical locations. So we can take the deeper meaning and we can take the the, you know, the general the general word. And you can see that every one contains the other in a way, because we, we go deeper and more detailed in the, the big, vast term G, which stands for Earth. Now, uh, this means also that when we said location information management and analysis, People start to argue, does it mean that GeoBIM is part of BIM, in fact? Well, yes and no. See, the key difference in, uh, in action, like the, the key difference is actually in location analysis. Although we manage information in geoinformation, but we take the science of unrelated, like the, the science of unrelated construction subjects and give them factors for decision making. This includes factors for digital twins. We analyze any kind of location data and give back conclusions that the BIM process can't most of the time expect. Now, the idea of of predicting our outcomes through rotation variance is what makes our world unexpected. And an advanced digital twin must have an advanced GIS system with not BIM-related location information. Because that's the added value of the integration. 
Of course, alongside a detailed, well-maintained BIM ecosystem in the building project. See, on the left in this slide, you can see the, the equation of transformation for, of Cartesian transformation. The M stands for the, for the scale, for the scalar, multiplied by the X, Y, and Z, which are the coordinates of the local model or the local system we're using. And we add to that the delta of the center of the Earth, like the movement, the shift that we've made to this specific location, which has an initial zero or, or, or a beginning. And, and this is a part of, uh, of the movement between GIS and BIM, when you, when you want to talk about formats or, or anything related. But as, as I was starting to say, like when we talk about digital twins, we start with 3D visual representations and real-time data synchronization from both sides, the digital and the real world. And if we want to take it deeper, we talk about automation based on the analysis of the updated real-time data. And this is what I was trying to explain earlier, that the analysis part, the analysis of the, of the, geo, of the location uh, data is what makes the BIM more related to a digital twin or a foundation for a digital twin. You can take the, the 3D data of, 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 uh, of a model and add to it uh, missions or three or three or, or real-time data synchronization. But in order to, to make it alive or real or a digital twin is the analysis part that comes from the GIS. And this is actually, as I said earlier, the, the added value in the GeoBIM integration, knowing that you can take unrelated information of location and give it meaning to a, a BIM project site. Now, moving along, I'm gonna say, why is this information so important to this forum? I'm going to start with the demands and issues we face daily. BIM related professionals face time and budget costly challenges that sometimes can be easily fixed using the right methods that we're showing here. And that's something I actually face daily in many of my projects. You see, you can see in, in here that. The rework part is, is a major part. Projects that require rework uh, during a course of a project are 52%, and that's where I'm going to dig next. But let's look at the other key uh, issues and demands that we're seeing here. Well, 80% of the projects overshoot their primary budget, and it is related to the rework part as well. We can see that workers also spend many hours on that same rework. And 20% of each project is not finished on time, which is also a, a key factor to the, the, to the quality of the project uh, itself. So let's really talk about the rework. When you can see that uh, according to Autodesk on estimate, we're talking about 15% or 14% of the construction project budget goes on rework. Now, if we take 55% of the rework that is caused due to inaccurate documentation, that says that more than 7% of the project uh, of the project budget goes on inaccurate documentation. And that's actually where GeoBIM, I think, needs to, to improve the most or, or, or it can be the added value of it can actually uh, be seen uh, better than uh, other uh, stuff. Let's talk about a similar research 
that actually claims that also it's true about the Gantt time shuttles. A very common example is that you can take an amount of cement bought in a specific phase in construction site, and it can sometimes not be enough to be, uh, due to bad documentation. And in a bad scenario, a new amount has to, has to be added, while in a good scenario, you're stuck with an extra unwanted bought product. So when we're talking about time and, uh, and budget, these are really key factors. We can see that also it's not just true about inaccurate documentation. When I said also GIS BIM integrations can be understood when we're speaking about uh, the added value of it using, using the non-related BIM subjects. Like look at supply chain mismanagement or poor quality. That's actually geo, geo data related, but it's not necessarily BIM related data that can be used to make management much better. Now, we said that we have a, many rework, uh, let's call it deficiencies or problems and BIM and GeoBIM integration can actually really help fixing that. Like using the right GeoBIM methods make these challenges much more avoidable. Some of these method, methods are, are here. I'm gonna explain some of them. Construction technology, when you adopt construction technology to simplify document exchange and prevent miscommunication, this is a key factor. While also we, like be having the right trade partners, I'm gonna mention surveyors here and the GeoBIM integration can be added value. Improving communications in the field to prevent miscommunication is a key information between all kind of uh, BIM related factors. And that is actually the center of BIM most of the times. And uh, of course, high quality standards. I'm gonna talk about the relationship of that to GeoBIM integration. These rework tactics can be implemented with a good GeoBIM foundation using advanced equipment methods. It gives a much higher quality and avoids a lot of rework. Um, while also giving more information in less time or using the BIM ecosystem makes communication much better. And, you know, demands the, that use the advanced equipment have proved the increase of probability of meeting the standard demands. So we know that taking uh, the, the laser scanner data actually can give you much more information uh, relating to what you send to the planners. And that makes actually uh, perfect sense in improving communication using BIM. Uh, same goes actually for quality standards using a much better tech, uh, let's call it a better multi-station, gives you a higher quality at site, which prevents actually a lot of reward. Uh, I'm going to explain that by using the surveyor as, uh, as a, a pivot here. You know, the, before, before we start surveying, uh, before we start a, a, a project, planners, you ask for maps and they send surveyors to give them an initial maps of the area so that they can use it for planning. But then if it's, if, if it's not good enough, he's gonna ask for, you know, for, for, for some new field data. And, and then he starts to rework the planning. And that's one surveyor. There's the subcontractor of, 
uh, of surveying, which actually which actually goes and works alongside the entire project by the contractor. Now, that being said, the planning gets so very usually is also quality control. So, and that's where some of the main, the main mistakes I catch in, in many sites, not using the right equipment uh, for the standards that have been demanded for the specific project. And uh, you see, this ecosystem is actually a big part of, uh, of the BIM in, in the site and is, is responsible for a lot of reworks. So having the right uh, methods of work for location gives you the, the extra mile uh, when we're talking about uh, GBIM integration. Now, um, Although the term GeoBIM is not new in construction, but it is getting much more accessible with new software. Like uh, we're getting a lot of releases uh, from big vendors such as Autodesk and Azure, and the advancement of hardware thanks to NVIDIA and the AMD gives what was only possible for very few projects before. So imagine we have much more capacity for data. We have much better analysis power and tools for, for, for projects. And that gives us the, the, the improvement that we should seek when we're talking about rework and additional costs in, in, in construction projects. It has been tested and we have already seen results that using some of the GeoBIM integration gives a, gives a much better improvement. Uh, you see the chart, it's, uh, it's by a study conducted in Australia. Uh, we see that the, the GeoBIM integration has increased drastically in the past few years. And that research was even conducted in, in 2017 which was six years ago, we have improved much more than that. You can see that by looking at the stock on NVIDIA or seeing the new equipment released by uh, many vendors. So I'm gonna give you a good example, a really of, a, of, a, of an amazing digital twin approach using the uh, GeoBIM integration. Uh, this is, as you all know, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, uh, where they use actually for more than 10 years real-time inclimeter sensors to, uh, to calculate the tilt of the building in any given time. They've actually used it at the beginning to, 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 you know, to continue the construction phases. They needed to know the tilt, they needed to know the strength of the wing in any given time. And they've used these sensors to actually uh, expect and know at real time how they can, they should continue every and each floor. And uh, it's amazing that after, even after the building was finished, the, the sensors were there and they use them to analyze uh, the tilt of the building and, and, and you can even do much more than that using this, uh, this information you can calculate the, the strength of the wind, uh, the strength of your materials at real time and, and where you should do actually maintenance uh, sometimes and uh, or inspection. So it's a really good study case of using not just 3D visualization, which they have, but also using these sensors to, to know where the gaps are in real time. See, they, they talk to the building, the building talks to them in a way, and, and there is an automation of, of, of analysis. They use the information, they analyze it, and they know what to expect. And, and because it, they all the time get that real time data, they all the time improve their, their predictions using machine learning and AI. And that's, that's the new part to something that they have built really good from the beginning. 
And, uh, and and this is the approach that should be uh, taken when we're talking about uh, GBIM integration uh, and it's and the, and the, and, the, and the, the digital twins approaches. In summary, I I really recommend for uh, any BIM related professional to really get out of the box and explore how can you take what you've heard here and use it in your project to move forward and make your work more efficient and professional. Uh, Geoscience has a lot more to contribute to the BIM community that is implemented at the moment. You've seen uh, some specific uh, projects that they use it more and uh, the benefits really justify the methods here. And uh, thank you for your time. And if you're interested to hear more about the Geo world for me or anything related, Feel free uh, and uh, please be in touch. Thank you.